Hey everyone, it's Kaylin Anderson and welcome back to my channel, Poor Special Events, where we talk all about mobile businesses, uh, specifically mobile bartending businesses, but anything in the mobile business industry. And we cover all sorts of things that are business related, um, everything from um, weddings, special events, um, event coordination, uh, rentals, mobile bars, all sorts of things. So welcome back. If this is the first time you're ever seeing our channel, um, I would really, really appreciate it if you could hit that like and subscribe buttons. Um, of course, subscriptions are super, super helpful to a growing channel. Um, and I am so thankful for how much this little channel has been growing over the past year and everything that we are continuing into 2023. So without further ado, for this video, I want to talk about the top five things that every business owner should be doing right now in the new year. So especially in this mobile industry where you can up and go and you are um, serving your clients in a variety of places, you don't have a brick and mortar location, um, you are traveling to and from these events, there are five different things. Um, some of them are, are good for any business, but a couple of them are specific to the mobile business industry. So I wanna jump right in here and talk about these five things. So I'll list them off for you and then I'll kind of explain a little bit about um, why I think these five are so important and, and kind of go into a little bit more detail on each one of them. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is scheduling social media. Um, some people are great with this. Um, maybe at some point in your business career, you will hire like a virtual assistant or someone that can help you with this. If you are hustling, if you are just starting out or you're thinking about dipping your feet into creating your own mobile business um, and you're watching these videos, you know, for inspiration or trying to kind of get you, get you started, um, you might not be able to hire someone. I've been doing this now for a long time and I still haven't hired anyone, but I did start investing in uh, paid platforms that help make it so much easier. So for example, for scheduling um, social media, uh, there is one website and app that I love to use. It's called Tailwind and it is phenomenal. You can get a free version and kind of check it out. And then once you get going, if you have enough money in your budget, um, in your business, um, I hi highly suggest the paid version. I think it's very reasonable for what all it can do. It shows you how much time you're saving every time you're batch creating this content. Um, and when you pair something like Tailwind with something like Canva, um, using their new um, AI technology in Canva, you are able to then um, batch quality content very quickly. Uh, you can make everything kind of around your brand, your theme and your colors, and it will help you schedule all of that content, whether they're um, Instagram posts or stories or reels, Facebook posts, Pinterest, um, it will help you schedule all of those things. So for example, I was just working uh, yesterday on batching a, um, for me in the mobile bartending industry, I wanted to do a Sunday signature cocktail. So I always get questions about like, what are really good signature cocktails? So I did some batching, I did 20 signature cocktails, and now every Sunday for the next 20 Sundays, that's almost half a year, <laughs> Every Sunday for the next 20 Sundays, um, we will automatically see a signature cocktail um, post that I created pop up on my Instagram, my Facebook, and my Pinterest. So uh, it also helps you with your um, hashtags, like it shows you which ones are competitive in your area, which ones are good to put on so that you can um, make sure that your content is being seen. And then it also helps you with, um, when you pick the day that you wanna schedule it for, it gives you the best time for that platform. So that's awesome. So scheduling with Tailwind, I highly suggest it. Um, and at some point I can get a links to uh, Tailwind, Canva, all of that in the comments and you can check those out because they're really awesome. So scheduling your social media, um, you know, in the winter time for me, in my mobile bartending business, um, we don't really do events in the winter. It's just something that I decided I didn't want to do. Um, I have other businesses that I run. I teach full time. I'm in college full time. I have young family. I have little kids and I just can't do it all year round. It's a wonderful, wonderful spring, summer, fall <laughs> business. I need some me time. So winter is that time where I kind of get organized, reset, get ready for the next season, 
talk with my clients, get them all set and things like this with social media. So um, the number one thing is scheduling your social media. The next thing that I want to talk about, um, reaching out to venues. So if you are in any kind of mobile business space where you're going to be hopping around and traveling, uh, for me, we do tons of weddings. Yes, we do bat mitzvahs, we do birthdays, we do graduations, we do celebrations of life, funerals. Um, we do everything, but 95% of the time it's weddings. So we are, um, we've worked very hard to establish partnerships um, and really good, you know, communication with all of our local venues. So anytime a new venue pops up, I reach out, I establish that connection, and um, I really want to be on their preferred vendor list. So I explain to them, you know, all the reasons why we're great to work with. Um, I give them all of our insurance information, like we are insured, we are certified, you know, I give them everything. And then this way, as they are doing tours at their venues for prospective clients, if someone books with them and they say, okay, well now what do I need? Well, they can say, hey, here's your bartender, here's your event, you know, coordination, here is your serving staff, here is this, here is that. So um, those venue owners, I cannot say it enough, like again, probably about 80 to 85% of my referrals come from venue owners more so than anything else. Because if you um, truly take care of a venue, uh, that owner is going to want you back time and time again because they can trust you and they appreciate you taking care of their space, especially when uh, venues are, you know, super expensive. Um, you know, all the insurance, maintaining them, maintaining the property overall. So they really want the best of the best looking after their place. And that can be you. So use this time here in the winter to make those connections, reach out, explain all of your services, explain what you can offer and say, you know, we want your business. Give us a shot, especially if it's new, if it's a new venue or if you're new to that, that area, that location, um, and do your best when, when you finally get in there. I, I can't say I have, you know, bookings almost every single weekend with the same five, six, seven, eight venues over and over and over again. And it's phenomenal. It's really great. Okay, the third thing is submitting all your paperwork. So we are now into the beginning of the new year. You are going to be having to get all your tax documents together. You are gonna have to get all of that stuff organized. Um, for the person who may be thinking of starting their new mobile uh, business and who hasn't started yet, um, for me in the mobile bartending space, um, I did create an LLC for my business. You can do that in the state that you're in online. You can do it yourself. There, um, there are like your government's website will walk you right through the whole process. So you can do it yourself. If you're nervous or worried about missing something, um, I know LegalZoom provides a really good product um, that can help you as well. There is additional cost obviously for that. Um, and then also if you're still worried about it, if you have a, a, a really good lawyer, um, I would go through that. Having multiple businesses, I've done it multiple ways. Um, with one of my businesses, I just went through the government site and I did it myself with a whole different business um, on a whole different level of um, costs and pricing and like tons of money. Um, we went through a lawyer because it was a whole different ball game and something that I was not used to and I wanted to make sure we didn't miss anything. So I've done it two ways. I've never personally used LegalZoom, um, but I do hear great things about their product as well if you need help in that area. The other thing too is getting a great accountant. So making sure your accountant is there to answer your questions throughout the year, making sure you're on track with all of your paperwork. Some things that um, come up when you're going to do your taxes, some major things and things that can be written off. Um, the office space that you're using, the square footage of that, Anything you need in that office can be written off. So any of your supplies, if you're printing contracts, if you need printer ink, if you're using a computer, um, your phone, all of that stuff. Those are things to think about. Um, with traveling, the mileage on your vehicles, what vehicles you're using. Uh, if you have any mobile bars, the wear and tear on the mobile bar. So any maintenance that needs to be done. So if you're doing oil changes on cars, if you're doing... Um, tire rotations or t like changing tires out or brakes or anything out in your trailers. Um, anything that's maintenance for the business, uh, anything that you're using, those things can all be right off. So those are things to think about. Uh, I try and keep my mobile business uh, very simple by using one type of business credit card and tracking all of my expenses through there. And then at the end of the year, you can get your year out summary printout 
and it has all of the categories that your accountant will be looking for and how much you spent. So I love that because it's really quick and easy. I just go in, I print out my year end summary, I take a look, I um, compare that to what my account's looking like at the bank, I get that summary for the year, and then I can kind of just take those things and send them over to my accountant and when she has questions, she asks me and it's very simple and it, it makes it not so scary. So um, that would be my advice if you are going the LLC route. Um, and kind of what paperwork and things you need and, and things to think about. Again, um, that's just what I've done. This is not legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. I can't, you know, tell you do this, do that. Um, but that's how I did it. And it's worked out fine for me. So getting your paperwork, um, getting all that together here at the beginning of the year is super important. And, and if you don't have a business credit card yet and you're thinking about it, it just sounds scary. Um, the application process is not that bad. You may need to call, reach out. I always say like, call the real person, talk to the real person. Uh, even if you're looking at doing an LLC and you're on your state's government website and you have a question and they give a phone number, call. If you talk to the real person, they can help you so much. And I feel like we are in a time um, in history right now where it's like, ah, I know personally, if I get a voicemail, I get nervous and I'm like, oh, someone needs me. I have to listen to that voicemail right now. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. Um, but I, I get like that. I know I do. So, um, but I cannot stress enough when it comes to your business, asking those questions, calling the real person. Um, I was helping my brother actually set up his business. He was choosing to use an LLC and at the time we live in Pennsylvania, um, they had switched over their online system and we went through, we did all his paperwork. I helped him get everything settled. He paid the fee because in Pennsylvania, the processing fee is $125. Um, he paid the fee, did everything. And it had been like two or three months and he said, Hey, I still haven't received anything. And I'm like, that's strange. It shouldn't be that long, a couple weeks, but it shouldn't be that long. Um, because all they're doing is really just having a, a real person verify your naming, make sure nobody else has that and verify that you put all the right, you know, stuff down on paper and you're good to go. Um, so when I Googled his business name, it came up and it said, yes, this has been a real business. And it gave me the date and the date was like two months prior. And I'm like, well, it looks like you're a legit business because as far as Google's concerned, you're up there and it says you're active in the state of Pennsylvania. And he's like, what? So he, I said, you need to find the number and call. So we went on the state's government website, we called, and uh, the gentleman said, yeah, actually our state has switched their platforms and some, some of the paperwork got lost in the shuffle. Um, and he was able to help him recoup that paperwork, your articles of organization, if you're using an LLC, um, recoup that paperwork so that he can then go get his business bank account, get all of that stuff opened up. I will tell you 150%, um, in my experience, your first business is the hardest. Getting all of your um, ducks in a row, learning how insurances work, learning you know what you need, what you don't need, um, getting that business credit card, that line of credit, getting all of that stuff. That is like your hardest first step. If you're gonna be an entrepreneur and you are gonna have other businesses and you're growing, um, I like to say that you know, 15 year old me is way different than 20 year old me is different than 25 year old me is different than now I'm getting to my age, but um, is different than who I am now. And the businesses that I've been creating and learning and growing are, they kind of grow with me. And so um, if you asked me 10 years ago, if I thought I would be doing, you know, real estate business and a mobile bartending business, and I would have been like, no. Um, but when I opened my real estate business, um, the process for that was 10 times more, um, like stress-free, super easy, because I already have those relationships. Like we've already gone through the LLC stuff, so we knew how to do that. We already um, have our business line with our business credit card. So when I applied for this new one, even though I showed zero income because it was a brand new business, they gave me a line in 30 seconds and it, it was fine. Meanwhile, with my first business, it took like three weeks and I had to call them and say, hey, listen, I'm a real person. I want to spend money. I'm going to do this. Please give it to me. And they gave me the lowest amount. <laughs> and then from there, we've, we've built that relationship. So I can guarantee you, your first business will be the hardest. But once you get through all of that, um, moving forward, it's so much easier. So those are my tips. Uh, my third tip for like getting all that paperwork and everything. My fourth one is creating your vision and your goals for the year. Um, even if it's like 
I grew up in the times of your mother writes down all your chores on the back of a piece of junk mail, like on an envelope, and you better have them done by the end of the day or you're gonna be in trouble. Um, so for me, I always just grab whatever closest piece of junk mail is next to me and I make short lists. I don't make beautiful vision boards. I don't uh, cut things out and decoupage them. I don't um, print things or I, I just don't. But in my head, I visualize exactly what I want and where I wanna go, um, how I wanna grow. And I sit and I write on my envelope of junk mail, you know, here are my top five things for the year. Here's what I want this business to do this year. Here's where we need to go. And then maybe I write down, okay, well, how do I think I can get there for each of those things? Um, you know, is it taking care of my clients even more? Are there other things that are really personal that I can do for them? Is there different services I should be offering? Are there different price points I need to offer the services at? Um, am I doing enough for my venue owners? Am I doing enough for my staff? Am I taking care of them? So really, what is your goal and your vision? Um, and it's not bad to, you know, if you're trying to hit a certain um, price point when it comes to like what your business can make and what you can do, that's not bad to put down either. You know, speak it out into the world and see where it goes. So goals and vision are number four. And then the last one, getting organized. So all of these four things are getting you organized. They're getting you ready for your season. But um, when it comes to um, things like in the mobile bartending space, consumables, or even if you're gonna open a mobile coffee shop, you know, getting your cups, getting your lids, getting your straws, napkins, um, any utensils that you might need to buy, you know, if you need multiple sets, are you catering to multiple events in one day? So how many sets of things do you need? Like for me, we do up to six events a day. So I have six sets of everything I could possibly need, and then I have to figure out where to store them. Um, but having everything, all your ducks in a row, having things as organized as possible, seeing what worked the year before, what didn't work, and really making like a pledge to fix that and get that ready for the next year and make your, your systems even better. Because if you're gonna grow and scale your business, and in the, another video I've created, uh, Business First, a company, for me, I'm trying to go company where you know my business can run even when I'm not there. Meaning, you know, I'm not totally hands off, but I'm able to be in the background and organizing all of these events, making sure everybody gets where they have to go and need, um, gets what they need. But I don't have to be the one in the trenches anymore. I'm able to scale this business from, you know, behind the scenes. And that's super important um, as I'm trying to scale my company. And I'm sure that's something that you all would be interested in as well. So these are my five tips for, um, any mobile business owner and things that we need to be doing in 2023. Again, five of them, scheduling your social media, reaching out to your venues, taking care of them. Okay, they're super important. Submitting all your paperwork, knowing your tax stuff, getting all that in a row, not being afraid of it, but being ahead of it kind of throughout the year, making those relationships with your accountant, with lawyers. Um, it all sounds scary, but it's really not. And it's really important to growing your company and then creating your goals and your vision and getting organized. So please, again, if you found any of this helpful or if you have any questions on any of the things that I've said, please post them in the comments. Um, leave a like, share, subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to continue batching these videos. So you're going to kind of see me, um, the next few of them here, kind of in the same space. But um, I think it works out well for us right now. So we're just going to keep it running. And I'm going to head into our next video. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, I'm Kaylin Anderson from Poor Special Events and hopefully you'll come back to my channel.